ったので、あらかじめご了承ください。For those who haven't recognized this place yet, I'm in Hakone. You can see right there on the door. Um, this place is nothing what I expected. To be honest, I didn't do any research before coming here. I just saw Hakone. Oh, yeah, maybe I've heard of that. And then I decided to come. And my god. Right now, I'm just walking through my hostel. And I forgot how busy weekends can get here in Japan. Especially seeing that it's Japanese holiday and Saturday, this place is crowded, but it's so nice. Like right, right now I'm in a place where there's actually nobody, so it's really nice. But just maybe a five-minute walk down that way, my God! So look at this. It's an actual hike to get to this B&B, man. To this guest house. So, cool fact about this path. This path was actually created back when shoguns, samurais, and feudal, world, bleh, feudal lords roamed the lands. It was back built. Bleh, too tired to narrate. It was built back in the Meiji period. Uh, yeah, no, I, just, I really don't know anything about this path, guys. I'm a real tourist. I just made all of that up. But it's pretty cool. To imagine when this could have actually been created and like how people actually use this and now only tourists use it because it's so damn slippery okay so i kind of feel bad telling you uh some misinformation that's not correct oh by the way guys look at look at the shark how cool is that but yeah i kind of feel bad telling you some misinformation so i thought i'd bring up some actual real information and I just have it here so I don't say anything wrong. But basically it was built during the Edo period by the government Tokugawa and it helped serve as a passage between Hakone and Mishima which the stone path was actually built so that when the rains would come it would not be too slippery or it would not be too, um, yeah, too muddy. But nowadays <laughs> When the rain comes, it's super slippery because of the moss that's been growing on it for a few years. But yeah, um, there's still parts of it that exist, and tourists like me, of course, can go walk on it. And it brings us to a pretty neat location, if I do say so myself, and you'll see later on in this video. Well, that being said, I'll let you guys get back to it. This nice stone path that was supposed to lead me all the way to a nice beautiful lake has led me onto the road. The long and winding road. I don't know if this is the correct way or not. But, yeah. After maybe a good 15 minutes on the road, I think I finally found the path once again. To Japan heritage. Oh, finally. Been walking down this road for the past 15 minutes. Sorry, I was gonna die. 
but now I might die from a bear, so who knows. So I just walked up one and a half kilometers of pure uphill. Just steps, 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 steps. It was just purely steps and road. And now, finally found the path, Monte Raconne. And yeah, three kilometers to Monte Raconne. Then we'll see where to go from there. So, the guy at the guest house told me, yeah, don't worry, it's just a one hour walk, it's flat. It's not flat at all, man. It's just a few steps up and up and up and up and up and up and it never stops. Don't get me wrong, it's a really nice walk, like really nice. But not in 33 degrees with an with 8% humidity. I feel like I want to die. Not gonna lie, since seeing that sign, I'm a bit terrified and paranoid as hell. But, yeah. Soldiering on, let's go! I am so close. So close. Oh, I could see the lake. Show me the lake, please. And by the way, I would really not recommend doing this path after a rain. Because even if it's bright, sunny, 30 degrees, and you would think the water would dry. No, it's fully in the shade. So the rocks are really slippery. I slept on it so twice myself. <laughs> Shame. But yeah, I would really not recommend it the day after a rainstorm. Finally arrives. So 